Welcome back to the sixth episode of Learning from the Pro. If you are new, these are professional go game sharing that is suitable for queue players. This episode will change the format a bit. I will reveal the whole game with you so that we could enjoy the performance of the players completely. Today, our main character is Ichirikuryo again. You may ask why him again? It's because he likes Etink a lot. He also loves finding ways or tesujis to capture his opponent's stones. So his goal is quite interesting to watch. This is the game from the Japanese Meijin League. Ichirikuryo 9 dan vs Fujita Akihiko 7 dan. So let's start. Ichirikuryo played the black. Black played a variation of Chinese opening. You may have heard that AI doesn't like any kinds of Chinese opening. The reason is that AI always prefer playing near the corner, such as free free invasion, approaching the corner or enclosing the corner. However, it's also important to recognize the fact that AI did not suggest that playing some classical opening would be bad. Don't believe AI has destroyed or solved any classical opening. It's still playable. So let's back to the game. White approach, and then he played um, AI Josaki. Then black approach, white played a pinza. Then black played the 3 free point invasion. Now, white get the center. Let's guess where would white play next. There is no any model answer, but there is a move that is very common to play at this moment. It is the attach. This move is also suggested by the AI to deal with the Chinese opening. There are four ways for black to play A, B, C, and D. Normally, it is very seldom for the professional players to play A or D. The reason why A is not good is because after white played this hand, eh, white could get the territories at the corner easily. Professional players don't like to lose the corner so easily, so it's quite seldom for black to play this move. But actually this move is also okay to play, just not as good as the others. Professional players also seldom play at point D. First, because uh, the position of this stone is not that good, so professional players don't like to play here. But what is more important is that this move looks like a retreat. It feels like white benefited for this exchange. So the professional players don't like to play this move also. Normally, professional players will play at point B or point C. At this moment, it's also not that good to play at point C because after this exchange, this pinza is at a good position. So white seems to be success for this variation. And black would not like to play like this too. So black played at point B. White played at this and then a knight move. Then black played a uh, one point jump here. This move looks more, but it's actually bank. It's a key point of white wood. In the real game, white played the knight move after an uh, exchange. The meaning is that white is going to sacrifice these two stones. Black push, which is quite back. White played a uh, jump. White showed that his intention to develop the bottom edge. Black push one more move. In the next move, the triangle point looks like a um, key point for the development of both sides. That means if white played another big point, this point feel quite comfortable for black too. So, white responded. Then, it's time for black to play the last Back point, which is obviously the free free point here. The corner is very big after all. Now let's guess white the next move. As I have asked it, it should be something else than the normal Josaki. 
First, let's look at the normal JavaScript key. It's totally playable. It looks good for white, but this harness and connection is quite big for black too. As a result, in the real game, white tried another JavaScript key. White played a harness and connect here. After black extend white play a knight move. Firstly, we need to notice that this Joseph key is less thick and strong as the normal Joseph key. Why white choose this Joseph key is because now he have a white friend to support the influence. So white think this Joseph key is thick enough. White could try to earn more territories at the corner. Comparing to the normal Joseph key, the triangle points are the black's territory. In the Joseph key in the real game, black lost these five points of territories. While for white, you can see these five points are white territories now. But in the normal Joseph key, they are not white territory. So you can see this harness and connect is actually very big. Fujita kind of gained 10 points at the corner. I think Fujita probably have used the AI to research the variation here. AI also believe this is the better way to play. Actually, the difference in win rate is very subtle, so it's not a warm move to play the normal Joseki. But I think this is a good example to show that there are many choices of Joseki and many factors would affect how to choose a better Joseki. Never believe there is a perfect Joseki that you could use anywhere. You cannot find that in Go games. Then black played a knight move. White press. Normally, we don't like how white press the black stones because we don't want our opponents to surround territories at the fourth nine. But white is prepared for this. After this press, white extended at this point to reduce black territory at the edge. So you can see white is very clear about what he's played. Then black play a hand in connection or a tiger mouth to protect this cut. After finishing playing here, white played a move at this point. Because in the next move, white could push at the point X, so black need to connect to prevent this. The question is, how should black connect? There's some small details to learn. As I have asked it, of course, the answer would not be the connect. Why the connect is not good is that white could connect these two stones in the future. I did not mean to connect these two stones now. I mean in the future, white could connect these two stones. Then, the black corner and the black edge is divided. Why white should not connect at this moment? Because you can see white is very weak in shape. After some... Attach and push. You can see white is kind of broken. So at this moment, white should play a jump instead. But what I mean is that white have the right to connect in the future and it will divide the black stones. So there is a better way to connect the black stones. Can you find it? It is the Kosumi here. As even white connect these two stones later, black could connect. So this is a better way to connect the stones. This is just some small detail, but we should always take care of small details in Go games. Then white played at the last big point, and the opening is finished. You can see black got three corners. One, two, and three corners. While white have to influence. Uh, if you ask which is better, AI will tell you 50-50. In AI era, it is harder to gain an advantage during opening. It's more important to try to lead the game to a situation that you like more. So if you like influence, you may like to play the white. If you like territories more, 
then you would like to play the black more. But it's a 50-50 game. Now, the focus is to destroy the moyo at the bottom edge. Black chose to invade at this point. You may heard of the proverb that be unhurried to enter opponent's territory. But top players nowadays prefer to play more aggressively. Notice that this move is peeping at the weakness of white. For example, if white just play this kind of move, black could play an underneath attachment. It's hard for white to divide black's connection. For example, if white divide at this point, black could cut. You could see there is no measure for white to cut the black stones. If white play a hane at this point, black could play this Tetsuji, and there is no good measure for white stones. So this is actually a good move that making use of white's weakness. In the real game, white choose to play a Kosumi or diagonal move to divide the black stones. And then white play a hane and cut. Isn't it a scary move? I think many of us are afraid our opponents to play this kind of move. But it could not prevent fight, calculation or demigo in goal games. Indeed, as there are many cut points for white, black could respond to it. Just we need to calculate how to respond to it. First, we need to find the key points of this shape. Do you know? It's the underneath attachment again. It's the key point. If white play a hanen on this side, then black could hit. White need to escape this stone. If white did not escape this stone after black captured this, white need to connect. Otherwise, black push white would be broken. But after white connect, after hit and a knight move. Black could escape. This is quite successful for the black stones as white lost a lot of territories. So normally white need to escape this stone. But after a cut here, you could see there is no measure for white to divide the black stones. If white hit here, there is a double atari. If white connect, Black could just reach it, and this became Black's territory. So, Black do not afraid White to play at this point. This would be a bit more complicated, but there is also measure for the Black stones. Black could first hit and hit. These two orders could be reversed, if not important. Then. Black could play an extend. After this extend, A and B become a mi. While B is a more important point, if white prevents the atari on point A, after black captured these two white stones, it's impossible for white to attack the black stones anymore. And white is kind of broken. So white need to prevent this ladder capture and black could play an atari here if white give up of course black could gain a success but we need to prepare for white connect at this point too after white connect at this point black also need to connect then white connect be careful if black connect now white could play a ladder although black could back home is not that good for black. So at this moment, black should prevent the ladder. Black should play at this point. Then white could only capture this stone. Otherwise, if black connected, black would have three liberties. White only have two. But after white capture these stones, Black could hit, hit, and play a knight move here. This group of white stones are hard to escape, and black surrounded around 20 points. 
This is a huge success for the Blackstones. As back to this point, you can see this is White's influence. What White gets at last is just turning its influence into territories, but Black gained an extra of 20 points. So this is a big success for the Blackstones. I spent some time to introduce the variation of this attachment. In the real game, Ichili Kuleo didn't play here. But the reason why I still try to demonstrate the variation here is because I think the key to advance your skills of goal is play less mistakes in this kind of combat. If you could play the variation and learn the variation I mentioned just now, then you will become a very strong goal player. Back to the real game. Ichili Kuleo chose another road. He hits here and connects. What he is trying to do is to escape a group of stones in the middle, which destroy wise development of the Moyo. This is also a good way to play, although AI would prefer gaining territories for the underneath attachment I mentioned just now. AI also didn't criticize Black's choice in here, so there are many acceptable choices when we are playing Go. Normally what happens next would be an extent, and then black hit here, push here, and escape. This is still a 50-50 game. Black destroyed white development in Moyo while white gained some territories, and also black is still not very strong yet. However, white make mistakes very soon. He played at this point. This is a big mistake, which is I think quite half baked. Here, black hit this stone and then divide the white stones. After this point, white could not prevent black to make some move here. But let's try to calculate what would happen. And let's see how your calculation differ from the real game. Try to think about what would happen in the next few moves. If you find it very difficult to calculate what would happen, just try to guess. So now, white would actually play a centre first. Uh, black need to jump, otherwise white could capture this 5 stone for a hugging. After black jump, white need to capture these 2 stones. If white didn't capture these two stones, um, white obviously would die. So white need to play here. Then, black played a good strategy. Could you guess this move? This is a good move, because it peeping at two weakness of the white stones. In the next move, black may divide the four white stones, or hugging the three white stones through point B. Why you only have one solution to this is this move. This move not only protecting black to capture the free white stone, it also stressed the problem of black's cut. If black connects the cut, then black would be captured all. If black protect this cut, why could just capture this black stone? So black could not connect, black need to push here. Then there are two choices for the white stones. The first choice is to hit here. Black could not connect. If black connect, then white could play a hugging. But black could play a squeeze. After this squeeze, black connected. These six white stones are being divided, and it's very passive for the white stones. White only have a few territories here, while black cuts the white stones, and this would be an easy game for the black. So white, choose the another choice. White connect, then black connected. White could not win the capturing race by this point. Black have 
one, two, three, four, four liberties, while white only have one, two, three. So white could not play these points. White could only choose to exchange. Black lost around 10 points on the edge, but it captured the 15 points in white territories. Capturing 15 points in white territories, that means 15 points of white became 15 points of black. That means white lost around 30 points at this corner. To comparing the loss of these 10 points, black gained up an advantage of about 20 points, which is an absolute advantage for the professional players. Black kept the 99% win rate until White resigned. I will analyze how Ichiriku Leo controlled the game. He played very very well after gaining this advantage. It's very worth to enjoy and learn how he controlled the game. So let's see in the next episode. And thank you for watching.